guys. So I saw in a group that somebody was asking regarding what happens if a client doesn't pay their invoice. I actually have these situations happen quite more often than you think. It usually happens when a client isn't on an installment plan. They usually don't pay like their second or third invoice. Uh, so obviously I've been shooting boudoir for over six years now and I've learned a lot of tricks along the way to kind of help um, push clients along that haven't paid their invoices yet. So what I noticed last year was with clients that were on an installment plan, I would just send them an invoice when their installment was due. And I think that after the first installment, the second and third one is usually the ones they usually lag on because of the fact that they've already received the first set of files or there's been such a amount of time since their shoot that it's not very urgent for them now to uh, be able to get all their their images, so they just kind of lag on the, those things. So you can do a few things. You can, um, you know, put a late fee on them uh, if they don't pay by a certain time. But uh, what I think that is really helpful is if you set some sort of automatic subscription plan, um, so where it would automatically pull the payment from them. So you could do it with PayPal. PayPal has an enhanced recurring billing fee of $20 and you can charge a client that. So you can just tell them, hey, you, I'll be happy to put you on an installment plan. It's gonna be a $20 fee if you wanted to do that. Um, with PayPal, you just pay for the enhanced recurring billing and then you can set up the payments however you want. So you could you know, break it up into three payments or however you want and then I'll divide it accordingly. What I really like about the PayPal system is that you can actually uh, put down like an itemization of what the clients are getting so that that way they know uh, what they're, they're paying for um, and that way you know you can actually look back on the invoice um, for later reference as well. Stripe also has a subscription billing plan as well that you can use but I think that with Stripe you actually have to go in and actually cancel the subscription when it's due so if they're on a three payment plan you have to just remember to put it on your calendar to go in and cancel it after you get that third payment. Uh, but with Stripe, I think that this, this description area of what they're actually paying for for the installment is very vague. Uh, so that way, so it, that, that can be a good thing and a bad thing as well. I prefer it to be a little bit less big. I want to put like the whole description and everything in there so that way um, I don't get a lot of pushback if like there was some sort of like complication or some sort of complaint regarding their subscription or what products they're getting. Also PaySimple has one as well, but they are actually, I think you have to pay a monthly subscription to them to be able to be on their plan. Now uh, with PayPal and Stripe, though, you have to know that in order to, for them to sign up for the, the, the recurring billing, you, they, you have to actually take their a little button and actually put it on a, like a, a web page. So you know if you have access to creating multiple pages on your website, you can make a page specifically for them and just send them that link and have them sign up for that. Okay, so that will basically kind of help with any clients that you have that are and have unpaid invoices, because you know the subscription plan basically will automatically withdraw the payment. And I think that with certain subscription plans like Stripe, they will try it multiple times if they don't get it the first time. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about going back and trying to send them another invoice and things like that. The other thing that I think really really helps with. Uh, trying to get people to pay their invoices is having a deletion policy. I know a lot of photographers are against this. This is just my own personal belief. I do think that with boudoir photography it's very intimate and people really value boudoir photographers for the fact that they keep their the photos of these sexy photos private um, and that's just one of the main reasons why certain women will pay more money for you because you're, they, they know that your photos are going to be safe. So for me, because my portfolio is just, is, I've been doing this for over six years now, so I have a really huge boudoir portfolio. For, there's no reason for me to really keep somebody's photos, especially if they're not allowing me to share the photos. I feel like it's a liability really uh, because I don't know if something were to happen down the line where their photos get leaked or you know, what if one of them happens to become famous or something like that, you know? I feel like it's, it's a potential lawsuit, you know, for me to have their photos and a potential heartache for the family if something were to happen and their photos got leaked somewhere. So I do have a deletion policy. And mine is, I archive the, the images for six months and then after that I purge my system and I will delete their photos. Uh, and so there's a few things you can do. My invoice, when I send the invoice, I say, you know, you have 30 days to pay this invoice. So usually it's like the first 
the first invoice or the first installment plan or whatever. Um, if they don't pay it within 30 days, then I say I mean, it will you know, delete all the files from the system. This really helps with getting those payments right away and they're not waiting like you know, 60 days to pay for the photos after they're viewing. Okay. The other thing that you can do is uh, you can have, an, you know, like say for instance, my policy is six months. So I will send them an email about, a month, about maybe a month before the six month expiration date and I'll say, hey, um, you've, we reached your you know, maximum archival date. I am gonna be purging my system on this date or however, whatever date you want it to be. And at this time, you know, if you have un any unpaid balances, please pay it. If you do not pay it, then I will, be purging my files at this time um, and you will lose them. And then also I include, you know, if you want to purchase the unretouched digitals from the proofing session, this is the amount that they are and you can charge them however you want. You can give them a little discount because you're, you know, deleting them or you don't have to give them a discount. So if they end up purchasing all of them, that's great. Then I could just delete them from the system because they have them. If they don't end up purchasing them, that's fine, then I can just delete them. So I'll send an, an, an email the month before and then like a week before just kind of reminding them that I will be deleting the files. This actually has really, really helped me getting a lot of unpaid invoices that I don't usually get. Some, you know, waiting six months is very long for an unpaid invoice. I mean, if you did that with your cable bill or your electric bill, they would cut you off. So um, I think that the deletion policy, putting that, implementing that it is really in great success for you being able to get your money. Because after all, this is a business uh, and you want to not have all these like unpaid balances that are just like everywhere, right? Okay. Uh, so hopefully the, this kind of helps you if you're having a little bit of trouble getting some sort of payment from your clients. Uh, or, you know, if you don't have these policies in place, maybe you might want to rethink it and do some of these things so that way your business can flow a little bit better. Okay. As always, you're welcome to message me with any questions. Subscribe to this channel to keep up more tips and tricks. I will talk to you next time. Bye.